Some time ago, Grant and I joined with Rockhound Field Trips Fanatics, which is a California-based Rockhounds group, and we visited a couple of locations in Central California. Join me today as we check out these amazing blue Lawsonites, colorful Jaspers, and unique serpentine specimens that we found in those locations. We actually flew there and rented a car, and so these larger specimens came back in my checked baggage, and the rest we mailed back to ourselves in about 18 or so flat rate boxes with the post office. We visited two primary locations on that trip. The first location we will be seeing rocks from today is the Clear Creek Management Area, located in San Benito and Fresno counties, and it has some intense subduction-related geology present. It's quite well known for its abundance of asbestos, serpentinite, and the various serpentine minerals. Here we are looking at an almost fibrous serpentine river cobble, which depending on the light can be intensely green and pearlescent, especially when it's wet. Evidently, these minerals form deep within subduction zones where mafic and ultramafic rocks, along with water, are chemically altered at depth to form these rocks. Later uplift and erosion brings them to the surface. You will often hear the terms serpentine and serpentinite. Serpentine refers to any number of a group of related minerals, just one of which we have been seeing here, whereas the term serpentinite refers to the rock composed of such minerals or containing them. Many of the other green rocks here on this sculpture could rightly be called serpentinites since they are rocks with various inclusions of serpentines. This next specimen, for example, is a very solid, well-rounded river cobble that undoubtedly contains serpentine, as is evidenced by its color. But it is also loaded with enough magnetite that it is really magnetic, as you can appreciate with the magnet here. It has an almost dendritic pattern on the surface, yet the overall grain size appears to be quite fine. I would really enjoy a geologist's opinion on what this particular rock might be, and I am also curious about if the vibrant colors are similar inside. I have not cut it yet, but after my recent polishing video, I am tempted to at least polish a smooth surface on it one of these days. Green has always been a favorite color of mine. Uh, so this location was a lot of fun for me. However, the group visited the location for the purpose of accessing a claim that we had permission to visit for the highly sought after plasma agate. My friend had hurt his foot though, and so we could not access the dig that day, but he later was able to go on a separate trip since he was living in San Diego and he made these cabajons we are seeing here. These were shown in the earlier video I did entitled Rockhound Semi-Precious Lapidary Gemstone Slideshow, which you would enjoy if you like cabajons and lapidary stones. I will post the link at the end for your convenience. The second area we visited was simply known as Area 54, and it was located in a hilly area known as the Pinochi Hills bordered by almond orchards. From what I hear, this area is no longer accessible. However, the Rockhound Field Trip Fanatics group might have updated information. My favorite take from this area was the overabundance of amazingly vibrant jaspers, which make up the majority of the display on this sculpture. Not only are the colors intense, reds, browns, greens, and even blacks, but the veining in these jaspers gives them an even more vibrant appearance. Not to mention that even the different veining patterns give us clues as to the intense mountain building forces that must have been at work in their formation. Apart from the regular, relatively straight parallel veining most of us are familiar with, we see also other unique patterns. For example, in this rock we are seeing what is known as echelon veins. The word echelon simply meaning ladder. Perhaps you have heard the term used in corporate circles referring to the corporate ladder. These relatively rare veins form when areas of opposing pressure in opposite directions meet. Rather than simply fracturing, the rock shears into this unique pattern and is later filled with minerals. 
This next rather large specimen shows two very different veining events in the rock's evolution. The vibrant white veins formed first, and then in an almost perpendicular direction the rock was again shattered by some unimaginable force and pressurized minerals of a more orange color were injected. Having the difference in coloring of the veins here is really an added benefit in the sense that it highlights the completely separate geologic events that took place and in what order chronologically they may have occurred. This even larger rock is another example of what may be reflecting the same two geologic events with the veining in quite perpendicular directions again. Note that the wider veining in the middle, however, has some of that unique echelon pattern to it. In this beautiful brown jasper, the veining almost appears to be caused by contraction, such as cracks that we might see in drying mud, or in the formation of septarian nodules in a sedimentary environment. Adam at the eBay store West Coast Rocks sold me a couple of beach-rounded jasper cobbles from Central California that exhibit a similar veining pattern even more clearly. Any experts on jasper and its different veining patterns who are seeing this video, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Another common pattern of the veins in these jaspers is where the rock is completely shattered and brecciated, erasing any evidence of its original structure. I am also curious about these jaspers where there is literally so much veining running in so many directions that hardly any of the original jasper is showing, but rather the rock is pure quartz with just a few scattered bits of jasper mixed in. So with the complexity and variety of the veining patterns in these jaspers, along with the brightness of the colors in the context of my rock garden use of them, I hope you can appreciate why I gathered up so many of them. I think I mailed myself nine boxes if I remember correctly. But now let's move on to, again, the gemstone, which was the original reason that we visited that location. And that is what is known as blue lawsonite. Lawsonite is a rare mineral that forms in conditions of extremely high pressure yet low temperatures in association, as we have been seeing with many of these rocks today, with subduction zones. It is very hard, about 7.5 on the Mohs hardness scale. Here it occurs in a medium-grained granitic rock, and I was not able to find much information about what the rock type might be known as, but the people in the group referred to this material simply as blue G. Yes, the letter G. And were fond of it due to its hardness and resistance to breaking, which made it ideal for carving. I remember that a guy there had made a set of rings out of it, and I was just amazed that something so small would not break. Many of my pieces have cuts on them to reveal the inside qualities, and I acquired those along with the largest piece at the center of the display from the then leader of the group, whose name is also Chris, by the way, and he had cut those to see the inside blue color. The ones with the rough grinder cuts were cut by my friend Grant for the same reason. In fact, the reason I have so much of this material even displayed on yet another sculpture, is that Grant brought home a, quite a bit of it and then realized he would not need to make that many cabochons, and so I happily inherited some of his material also. This blue G is unique for a couple of reasons. Firstly, note how fine the grain is compared to the others. The crystals are much smaller. And secondly, it has these brighter blue veins crisscrossing through it. I may make a future video in which I cut grind and polish a face on this rock uh, and then Grant expressed interest in making the other half of it into cabochons. I trust that if you're still with me at this point you've enjoyed the video and I am excited about the comments that may arise from it. Please remember to like and share as that really helps the channel to grow. God bless you guys as always and we will see you on the next one.